Okay, so give me a second to get off the screen. So welcome to Visual Analyzer, Project Visual Analyzer. Um, let me give you a quick tour of the UI. So on the left-hand side, there's a pane that uh, deals with a few different types of activities. The first area here is our data source. This shows you what's been imported into the project. So I can bring in subject areas that have been defined by IT in the data model. And again, what you'll see later on in the demo is I can add Excel data in here as well. So that's, that's really what our intent is for the, the first release to get out of the gate. But you'll see this concept extended for other kind of data mashup sources, things like direct connect to a database and maybe XML files and things of that nature. Um, so that's the data source panel. The, uh, the next panel is the, the data elements tree. This should look familiar to those of you that work in answers, right? It's the same idea, just a folder representation of the presentation layer. And last but not least is the visualization panel. So this is where we have the library of visualizations that you can choose from, drag onto the canvas. Uh, speaking of the canvas, you know, that's, the, that's the main actor in this play. Uh, that's the, the blank space in the center of the screen where you'll actually visualize your data. Uh, but also really importantly at the top is our filter pane. So again, what in this product, gone are the days of having to predefine all these prompts and all these filters. You'll see I can just start throwing things on here in an ad hoc fashion, filter on any attribute of the data set at any point in time. So really powerful. So with that uh, orientation, let's just dive in. So if you remember that, that dashboard we had in, um, in Answers had a bar chart with um, brand, region, and uh, revenue. So what I've done here is just control, click, select those three attributes. And you'll see as I start dragging them onto the canvas, an icon automatically appears. We actually run an algorithm, algorithm in the background to determine the optimal chart type for use here. And in this case, the system likes a bar chart. So we throw that on and automatically we get a nice bar chart on the screen. Um, next thing I want to do is look at this correlated with time. So again, I don't have to switch over to a dashboard product and bring that in. I just bring those two attributes that I want on the screen, and voila, we have the, uh, the two things side by side in the UI. What's also nice is in this mode, everything is connected. So let's say I want to do some filtering. Let me go and take something like organization. Let me drag that up to the filter panel. And we now see this really consumer-esque navigation menu, taking some of the ideas from Indeca. As I click, we you know, bring these attributes in and out, we can add them, we can remove them, any order that we want. Incredibly intuitive for users. Uh, and as you see, as I did that, all the charts on the page updated. What if I want to have my interactions on one chart affect everything else on the page? That's also easy. So I'll, I'll here take the last uh, couple of years of time data, marquee select that, and do a drill select. You'll see those filters move to the top of the page there, and the bar chart updated on the screen as well. So now everything is connected by the uh, and there's, there's more, don't worry. Uh, we have something in, a, in the, this version called what we're calling the Explore panel. So as I open that up, that's where this notion of that grammings of the graphers start. Grammings of the graphers. <laughs> we had an early morning with Thomas' keynote. It's been a, it's been a long day for us. <laughs> the grammar of graphics. Um, so this is what's driving the configuration for the visualization on the screen. Um, it also makes it really easy to just experiment and look at different types of visualizations. Uh, so for example, maybe I'll go and check out what a pie chart looks like. Uh, the engineers even twisted my arm and threw in some polar charts. So hopefully you guys like those. <laughs> Still trying to figure out how I use them, but that's okay. Um, one of the ones I use for most of my analysis is a scatter chart. Right? I can put in about five or six different attributes at once. And this is kind of the full specification of that graph. I can do trellising, I can put things on the coordinate system, which in this case is the X or Y axis, or I can populate appearance attributes like color, size, or shape. What's helpful with this though is it kind of teaches me what I should do next. Like here I see that values is empty and all the bubbles are in a line. So that's not helpful for me to see a pattern. I want to add something to that. So let's go and look at something like discount amount. But you know, as a casual user, I've never been exposed to the presentation line before in all likelihood. So I don't know where to go to look for things. What I do know how to do is type into a search box. Right? Pretty much everyone's gotten good at that. So I'll just go in and type what I want. I want to bring discount amount into my analysis. I type that in, we search into the RPD content, I see a direct hit, I double click on it, and we automatically place that onto the chart in a smart place on that x-axis. Now I start seeing these patterns. I'll go, I'll, I can drill select, I can left click, or right click, I do that drill, 
Again, you see things being stacked up on the filter panel up there, and everything on the screen. So that's really, again, the idea is just make it really easy, have a really low cost to explore, but also give me control over the UI. I can drag any of these around and reposition them, we'll, we'll resize them intelligently. You get the idea. I can even drag things across drop zones if I want to. So that's really speaking to kind of where we're taking this from an exploratory analysis standpoint. But as we said, another key requirement that we're hearing is the need to bring in business user data. So we need to make that simple as well. Um, so subject areas were just on the screen there. Now we're looking at an upload file. And what I'll do here is I have a little a small Excel file here with some social media data. So I've actually gone and kind of scored my customers by their cloud score and put them into buckets. So I want to augment my IT data with this kind of more volatile, kind of fuzzy social media content. Uh, let me go do that. So it's actually quite easy. All I need to do is point uh, OBI to the file, and we flash on the screen this little dialog that shows me that there was a successful connection. There happened to be an attribute with the same name in each of those data sets, so we automatically establish a link there. Um, if you want to modify that link, it's, it's just double click that. Um, we're even adding specialized semantics so that we do the right join logic based on whether you're extending a dimension or bringing in a new fact table. So here we detected a dimension, we detected the right key, but again, if I wanted to, I could change that, I could go and point it to the different fields in my data set that it should be linked to. In this case, though, we got it right. So last thing I'll do is open this up in the data elements tree. We can see that Excel data side by side with the IT data, and let me just start using it. Um, again, this was kind of an extension of my customer dimension, so let me go and grab a customer field, let's say something like segment, and look at that from a revenue standpoint. So I'll control click uh, revenue, customer segment, and cloud. And I'll drag that onto the screen. Again, as I do this, note these little uh, panels up here that show me different places I can drop this onto the canvas. And when I do that, again, we'll automatically resize and make it look good without you having to worry about it. And here, this one chart now, I'm blending the Excel data with the IT data. And I can even use it to harmonize my other visualization. So let me throw cloud bucket on color. And all of a sudden, right, I've got my own perspective based on my own personal data. So one last thing to show here. Uh, we talked about mashup, we talked about visualization. The other trend that we're looking to capitalize on is making advanced analytics easy. So I'll maximize this chart here where we're looking at a pattern over time. And if I go over to the gear menu um, in the chart here, uh, what you'll see is some options for me. I can add a forecast. I can add a trend line. So these are advanced analytic functions that previously you would have had to run within Oracle Database. But as Vasa will talk to, we're moving these up to the BI server and we're integrating that within the UI. So it's one click away. So if what I want to do is do something like add a trend line, it's as simple as clicking the mouse. All of a sudden a regression function runs in the background and I can see that line kind of smoothing out the fit of my chart. So you get the sense. What do you guys think? Something that's interesting? Absolutely. All right.